panoramic look at First Hill from Safeco Field here in Seattle on a fabulous Sunday. A beautiful way to end the 2015 season as we welcome you inside on a beautiful blue sky day at Safeco Field for the Athletics and the Mariners in the final game of the season. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, and all of us here with the Mariners and Root Sports say thank you for your support this year. Thank you, Mariner fans. And today, Kid Appreciation Day should be a lot of fun. And now Nuno on the mound for the Mariners. And I got to tell you, the boys on Park Avenue or somebody struck gold as all these games are starting at the same time. And a lot of games have big things riding on them. First pitch strike to Marcus Simeon. Especially in the American League. A lot of things oh, yeah. going on in the American Leagues. So we'll keep an eye on the scoreboard today as you watch this game. Simeon two for three career against the Dow Nuno. Nuno ahead 0 and 2. Simeon just showed you that big two run homer he hit last night in the 13th inning. And the A's victory. My guest for broadcast balls and strikes today at Hickox at first, Paul North, the umpire at second, and Dana DeMuth at third. Simeon had already added to the damage he had done against the Mariners this year. 15 home runs for Simeon on the year, five of them against the Mariners. Mm. I remember correctly, they like the first time we saw him. Hey, the first series he had a couple. Papa Felix, I believe. Yeah. Yet, but it will be probably second, third, fourth innings. They'll start to work their way out on the field. Probably later because they'll continue to move off the field and the shadows will come back in. So it'll be later in the game. Hopefully the Mariners have to lead them. 2 2 pitch. That is a foul ball. He stung it. Already eight pitches in this at bat to Simeon. Seems like a slider in the middle of the plate. Out in front of it a little bit, and it is foul. Again for Nuno. He will work quickly. He works out of the bullpen. He's basically a fastball slider combination. When he's been starting, he's used his changeup quite a bit more. It's been a good pitch, especially against the right-handed hitters. Straight away in the outfield, 2-2 pitch. This kid can hit. Has had all kinds of trouble in the field, but he can hit. Take a look at the rest of the batting order for the Athletics. Four manager Bob Melvin, as you saw, Simeon going to lead things off, and it's Canna Laurie Valencia with a three-run home run in the first inning of last night's ball game. He will be the clean of DH tonight, hitting fifth. Billy Butler, Reddick, Smolinski, Gentry, and Brian Anderson getting his first start. He will round out the nine for the A's. For Nuno, one and four record, a 4.19 ERA, 58 strikeouts to only 16 walks. Opponents hitting 278 against the lefty. Mark Canna, the hitter, single and a triple last night. It's a strike one. A nice crowd here in the final day of the season here at Safe Go Field. As you along. Spanked in center field, so the A's come out swinging it. Take a look at the defense for the Mariners. Seth Smith getting the start in left field. Brad Miller, as you just saw, in center. Mark Trumbo, your right fielder. Kyle Seeger at third base. Marte and Cano playing up the middle. Logan Morrison gets the start at first. And Sucre will do the catching this afternoon. Laurie, second baseman. A couple of hits last night. Open a run with the sacrifice fly tonight to tie it. The A's this year really had a tough time with left handed starters. Their record just 15 and 31 against left handed starters this year. Early trouble here for Nuno. This one fouled off.
You don't like this format, Michael. Everybody starting at the same time today. That's great. I, I wonder how the clubs feel that are in it. They probably like the advantage of some of the games starting sooner. What a pick by Kyle. Absolutely. Turned nicely at second base by Cano as they go around the horn. Another ball hit hard. They get two outs out of it. Well, here's one of the many scenarios we'll be dealing with here today. If the Rangers win, Angels are eliminated. Texas clinches the West playoff picture. If the Rangers win, there you go. Texas plays the number two seed in the ALDS. New York versus Houston in the wild card. There will not be a test, multiple choice, or essay, so you're good. We'll just keep going through these as through the course of the afternoon. And a couple of things to keep in mind in the Rangers Angels game today. That's, that's interesting. One, Garrett Richards going on three days rest. Mm -hmm. And two, for the Rangers, their setup man, Dyson, and their closer, Tollison, both have pitched five days in a row. Uh, Dyson was pretty good yesterday. Tollison was not effective. So it'll be interesting to see how Bannister, the manager for the Rangers, does that situation when they get towards the end of the game. But some interesting scenarios going on. It's going to be, hey, what can you give me? That, that's what, basically, right. that's it. <laughs> Whatever you got, give it, let me have it. Danny Valencia, one and one to count to him. Three run homer in the first inning last night, hit a two run homer the night before. Two run homer in the eighth. Mr. Albert Pujols has just checked in with the two run homer for the Angels. Here's the other scenario if the Angels win and the Astros lose, the Angels are at Houston. Texas clips the AL West. The Angels win and Astros win. LA is eliminated. Houston and Texas for the division. How about the Angels yesterday? I mean, that was I a great game. Up, gave them up for dead going into the ninth inning yesterday, and boom, 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 and they come right back and win it. I, I had done the same thing, and then almost immediately, Ibar, who led that inning off, hits the home run. Right. Calhoun hits the first pitch for a home run, and then I sat back down. I better watch this one. <laughs> Turned out to be a great, great game. Hit your pants back up. Let's go. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, that's that's that is remarkable, especially with their two guys coming out of the pen, right? And well, with Texas, good they've been. Yeah. Two and two to Valencia. Broken bat, pop up. Cooper couldn't find it. Momo was trying to help him out. Bat goes flying towards third base. Seeker checking it out. So then on his hands and basically cuts that bat right in half. Valencia needs a new piece of equipment. We get another update. First time in a while, the Astros haven't. They don't score in the first inning. They had 21 runs a couple of nights ago. But the Yankee free fall. They had mm. first wild card and home field advantage locked up. Lose a doubleheader yesterday. Both yeah. games of the doubleheader. Pitching matchup Pineda against Tillman as Valencia swings through. And after a few balls were hit hard against the Dal Nuno, he survives and posts the zero here in the top half of the first. The Mariners coming to bat.
here in Seattle. Blue Sky Sunday is take a look at the Mariner batting order that will face Chris Bassett. Four manager Lloyd McClendon leading off Cattell Marte. What a job he has done. Then it is Kyle Seeger. Franklin Gutierrez, the DH today. He will bat third. Robinson Cano, 19 of 21 run home run, or his 21 home runs have come in the last 88 games. He's been a hot hitter. Then you have Trumbo Smith, Morris, and Sucre, and Brad Miller rounding out the nine for the Mariners. Felix ready to go. <laughs> Was hoping that he would get the start. It's been a while since Cruz has been out of the lineup. Thought he should have been in there. Or Chris Bassett, <laughs> one and eight record, a 3.60 ERA, 61 strikeouts to 25 walks in 80 innings. Opponents hitting 244. He's given up five home runs. He has a good arm. His fastball average is 93 miles an hour. Throw a slider, curveball, occasional changeup for him. I think Felix setting a personal best. Most games with a bat held in your hand. Consecutive games. Marte certainly has opened eyes here in the second half of the season. What a terrific addition. Athleticism, a lot of energy, and he's shown well at shortstop. One more. I think the thing that you have to appreciate about him is, is in spring training we saw him. He did a lot of really nice things offensively. Defensively, he struggled early, started to get better. Chris Woodward working for him. It's obvious that when he was in the minor leagues this year, before he came to the big leagues, that he worked hard on his defense because I, I agree with you. I think he's played well. Number out in front of the plate, not going to get him. And a good start for the Mariners. That's what speed will do for you. It's a great dimension, boy, and it's so noticeable when you finally get somebody. You're absolutely right. The defense for the A's, Smolenski getting the start in left field. Gentry, he can go get it in center. Reddick, pretty good throwing arm in right. Valencia, the third baseman. Simeon and Laurie playing up the middle. Hannah, the first baseman. And Brian Anderson getting his first start behind the plate. We'll bring up Kyle Seeger. The Mariners have faced Bassett a few times this year. In his last outing, he went four and a third, seven hits, four runs. Walk for guys had for 90 pitches, so they worked him over pretty good. Cut by Kyle, fouls it off. Again, I love this. Whoever had the brainstorm to start all these games together, A tip of the cap. All over baseball, everybody's watching everybody what's going on. Including the players that are involved in all of it. They're looking at the scoreboard too. Oh, you know it. Soccer the final group rounds all start at the same time, so they get the same worldwide interest. Oh, and two to Kyle Seeger. A couple strikeouts his last two times up last night. One over for six. I'm gonna turn it around right here. Long hold by Bassett. Popped up, playable. Simeon taking charge. One away here in the first. Mariners take Seattle Children's for their season long support to create family friendly destinations inside the ballpark. Whether the Seattle Children's play field or the Moose Den, our youngest fans enjoyed a great experience right here at Safeco Field. Franklin Gutierrez batting in a three hole today with Nelson Cruz out. The right quad down. Added to his injury list, the right groin strain. It got cold last night, tightened up on him. Said he could swing it as a pinch hitter if he had to today. 
I'd like to see Franklin Gutierrez pick up a couple of hits today. He saw his batting average at 298. He's been over 300 for the majority of the year. I'm sure he'd like to finish that way again. He ended up one for four in last night's ball game. 1 0 -oh pitch to Franklin. There for a strike. A.J. Pollock, a home run for Arizona, leading Houston in the bottom of the first inning against Lance McCullers. There are your scenarios. This is going to be fun watching this get sorted out this afternoon. 1 1 pitch outside to Goody. Goody playing in game number 59 for him. How about that productivity? Like 15 and 35. A 631 slugging percentage for Franklin Gutierrez. And that's in 168 at bats. Yeah. So he's really had a nice year for him, a special year in Franklin, missing all of last season. We saw him in spring training. We weren't even sure how he was going to fit or if he was yep. going to be healthy enough to play. I think Lloyd McClendon has really done a nice job managing Franklin and on days that he, he can't play. For the most part, he's been available to him, but they knew that when they called him up, he was going to have to manage that situation, and it's really worked out well for everybody. I was asking Lloyd about that. How does that work? So generally, you know, I go around, talk to the guys, and say, What goody, what do you got? Did you go today? Yeah, I'm good. Or he'll, he'll just come in and say, Hey, today's not a day. I can't do anything for you. Uh, been, he's been very honest, and it's worked out well. 2 1 Angels says Fielder just drove in a run for Texas. Marte on the move. There's a wild throw. He sees it and he's going to get the third. But Brian Anderson didn't get have his feet under him. A wild throw. Didn't have a chance. Well, he, he picked the right pitch. 74 miles in the dirt. You take him, look at, take a dive. It looks like he was able to touch the front edge of the base and moving on. The stolen base E2. Lock him in. Lock him in. So they're going to go wild pitch E2. How about that? Okay. And they'll bring their infield in. Three and two to Goody. And he's aboard. All four runners at the corners. Robinson Cano, the Mariners' hottest hitter. Seattle City Light power play. How about Robin last night? Third inning, Mariners down. Kaboom, a three run homer. 21st. There was no question about it either. And at that point, the Mariners were down four to nothing. That made it a 4 3 ball game. For Cano, his 21st home run on the year. Chance to get something done here again. Inning streak at 15 games for Robin. Finishing with a flourish. Probably 10 for 21 on the home slip. Two homers, six runs batted in. Hitting streak 22 of 61. And with the walk to Gutierrez, the A's will move their infield back, try to get a double play. Opportunity here for the Mariners. With one out runners at the corners. Cano scorching hot. Late there, one on one. The fastball that we've seen from Bassett, 96 miles an hour on the outside corner. Deliberate pace and that pitch way outside. Two and one. There's something else that's going to be a lot of fun today. Talking about all these different games and the different scenarios. Right. The teams that get it done today and mm -hmm. celebrate, they're going to be some of the best celebrations because you have a number of teams playing under a lot of pressure today. So that, that will be fun to watch.
two and one to Cano. Now back. Two two count to Robinson Cano. Acid ready. Slow roller. Lori with the tag. Throws to get Cano. And that'll do it for the Mariners in the first. Threaten they don't score. They go to the second inning. The New York Yankees already in the playoffs, but they want to have the home game Tuesday. And right now, Baltimore with a 2 0 lead. Matt Wieters, a couple RBIs. If the Yankees win, they clinch that number one wild card. They'll host. The Yankees lose and tie the Astros. The New York clinches the second uh, wild card spot if they tie the Astros or Rangers. A lot of things going on today. It's out the pen enjoy the sunshine as Billy Butler looks at ball one. Munoz gave up two hits first inning, got a double play and a strikeout to get out of it. You've seen that from both starters so far. Both of them in trouble in the first, benefiting from the double play ball. That's able to get out at the bottom of the first with a double play. Breaking quickly. Nice catch. Two and one. Trout just made a terrific catch deep left center field on the track, robbing Mitch Moreland of extra bases. Seeger cuts in front of Mark Day. Got plenty of time to throw out. Butler went away. One down here in the second. The time is now to join the club as a Mariner season ticket holder in 2016. Whether a full season or 20 game plan, you're going to enjoy great benefits. Test drive a seat if you want. Do it today. When you contact an account executive at 206-346-4001 or Mariners.com slash 16. Josh Reddick going to stand in. One of two left-handed hitters in the lineup. Nice year for Reddick. 274, 20 home runs, 77 RBIs. Really struggled last year, so a good bounce back here for him. One for three. Last night came in the game as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning. Shot to center field. Miller going back. Makes the catch. 
two outs. This got to write a telecast. is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. A couple of days ago, look at top of the road tunnel here at Safe Go Field. Right McClendon talking about Brad Miller and how he can be the next Ben Zobers as the super utility player. He said, Perfect world. He'd like to see him maybe in the corner outfielders, but uh, outfield spots. But does a good job in center, learning on the way, on the job. He's gained a lot of experience, even on that last play. Ball was hit well by Reddick, and it was right at him. And that's a, that's a tough play to make sometimes. And you can see Brad. He froze at first, and then he was able to get back in time to make the play. He has plenty of speed. So this year we've seen him played all the outfield spots, all three of them. He's been a third, short, second. DH done a lot of different things this year. And, and he's been one of their hot hitters. Yeah. One two pitch. Just out of Seeger's reach foul ball. The other thing Lloyd was talking about is such a long strider. He's better suited athletically the way he's built for the outfield. On the, probably in the long term. I mean he can still and he play has, some. And he has plenty of arm to be out there too. Yeah. Justin Ackley with an RBI. Yankees on the board. O's lead it 2 1, top of the second. There's by Nuno. I think the other thing with Brad is you know, it's, it's difficult the first time they start moving you around because he obviously wants to play shortstop, wanted to be an everyday shortstop. And I give him a lot of credit that offensively. 260 with a career high 11 home runs this year. And defensively, he's gone out and been able to get his work in. And that's not always an easy thing, especially when you first get the news that that's the plan for now. He's really handled it well. Two outs, nobody on here in the second. 2 2 count. Jake Smolinski to left field. Full count. There's a 3 2. Look at him. Nuno throwing a lot of strikes. 36 pitches, 26 strikes. And if you're wondering, because he's been in the rotation and pitched out of the bullpen back and forth, his last outing as a starter, he threw 83 pitches. So he'll be able to probably go 90 plus today. Of all these foul balls by Smolinski not helping. Same type of thing with Simeon that started the game. I think it was nine pitches in that at bat before he finally picked up a base hit. This will be the eleventh pitch of this at bat. Three two. Another foul ball by Jake Smolinski. Two pitch. High fly ball deep down the line into the corner. Foul ball. Joey Butler for Tampa Bay just hit a grand slam off of Mark Burley. Bottom of the first, Tampa Bay leads Toronto 6 0. Another foul ball. My goodness. Running out of room here. It's all about clinching home field. It's between Minnesota, uh, the, the Blue Jays and Kansas City. Leslie 3 0. Minnesota eliminated yesterday. 14th pitch of the at bat. This is play. Brad Miller's got it. And a one, two, three second, although they had to throw a lot more pitches than they would have liked. Junio post another zero here at Safe Gofield.
double dip today. Later on, the Sounders. But let's bring you up to speed on what's happening in the National League. The only thing on the line, who's going to host the wild card game, Pirates or Cubs? Pirates up 1-0. Cubs up 3-0. Pittsburgh wins it. Well, uh, Clint's wild card number one. Chicago's got to get a win if Pittsburgh lost. No matter where that first that wild card game is being played, my two studs, alpha alpha male pitchers, Garrett yeah. Cole and Jake Arrieta, both of them having sensational years. I think that one may come down to the bullpens. And Pittsburgh has had a great bullpen this year, so we'll see. But what a pitching matchup! Jumbo Smith and Morrison here against Chris Bassett. Seth Smith. Exactly. Look down from right above us, the 300 level here at Safeco Field. And you can see the shadows; they're not a problem for the hitters at this point. Smitty with 11 home runs, 41 runs batted in. Shift on against Seth. Simeon on the right side of the infield. Pitch outside. How many times have we seen it? Get a shift like that. First pitch is out in the outside corner. We, we've talked about it all the time, and it, and it used to be that you go through your scouting reports and you would figure out how you're going to pitch a certain hitter, and then you put your defense to that. Now it's almost with the shifts, they're almost automatic, and they don't change the way they're going to pitch, and we've seen it a lot this year. To your point, pitching him away. So, you know, and I think for some hitters that's fine because they're going to get out there and roll over on for just automatically going to pull. But I think we've seen that with Kyle this year. We saw it even with Cano at one point, and as right. hot as he's been, he's used the entire field. So I'm not sure why that makes a lot of sense. The other thing they'll do is he has his fly ball off the center, is make adjustments when they have two strikes. All of a sudden they'll take the shift off because right. they feel like they're going to be a little more defensive when they're hitting and. And maybe not get around on a good pass. I think Houston, I remember seeing Houston do that a lot with two strikes. I've seen the Mariners do that a couple of times where they start with the shift and then they bring it back to straight up. Yeah. Stick around after the game. Mariners post game presented by Delta Airlines comes your way. Be a host of folks on that one. Brad Adam, Bill Kruger, Dave Valley, and Jason Bay, and Angie Mentink. Everybody. And Jim Mueller. Have them all. Now introducing the starting lineup, lineup, lineup. <laughs> Jen's going to be down in the clubhouse after the game, broadcasting live from down there. Two outs for Logan Morrison. Ball one to Lomo. Got a base hit last night in the eighth inning with one for three as he came into the game late in that contest. Came in as a defensive replacement. Probably didn't think he was going to get three at bats at that point. Two and oh. It'll be interesting to see where Logan is at going into spring training next year. I know, especially over the last few weeks. Even this week at home, which is rare, he's done a lot of work with Edgar Martinez trying to get things figured out. See what his stance looks like and how he's attacking the baseball in the spring. 17 homer, second best number he's put up in his career. He hit 23 Florida a few years ago. Center fielder Gentry gets under this one. And a 1 2 3 second for Bassett. Big day in baseball. And we thank you fans for being here today and all year long.
Baseball here in Root Sports being brought to you by the Silver Reef Hotel Casino Spa, I-5 exit 260, Ferndale, Washington. By BNSF Railway, sponsor of the BNSF Blast. And by your local Ford stores during the Seattle Auto Show test drive, a Ford vehicle on the warning track of Safeco Field. That could be a lot of fun. Like Sammamish, beautiful. And somebody is totally digging being out on the water here today. That is nice. <laughs> I had to laugh a little bit. Watching Cano, Sucre, as we, we've seen and know, he's done a great job throwing out runners this year. He typically, when he throws down to second base, he, he'll air it out. Yeah. And Cano will give him a target, and a lot of times he'll hit the target today. <laughs> He threw it in the dirt. It was a little bit behind Cano, and it might have been one of the best plays I've seen Cano make. Backhand behind his back and snatched it. And it, I, it had to be going down there at about 90 miles an hour. <laughs> and then he just stared down at Sucre. Yeah, he's laughing about it now. <laughs> <laughs> he's got some set of hands. He's, he's got like great hands. High hand coordination's unbelievable. One and two here to Craig Gentry. Leading off in third. Gentry hurt most of the year. Only 48 at bats for him. Tough year all the way around. 48 at bats hitting just 104. Third time at the club this year. We've talked a lot about the Mariners and, and especially today. It'll be interesting to see what Billy Bean is going to do with these A's. They have a lot of work to do. Reached out, pulled one foul. Yeah, Billy, Billy's made a lot of moves. I mean, this is a team that had, we talked about it last night, Brandon Moss, Cespedes. Donaldson. Donaldson, I mean, those Derek are three Norris. big ones right there. Four good hitters. Mm -hmm. Two, two. Fair ball. It eludes the diving grab uh -huh. of Seeger. It's going to roll around in the corner. Gentry, one of the faster runners we have in the American League. Could be a play at third. He is in there safely. Triple for Gentry, his second of the season. Dave mentioned it. You're going to take a look at it. Fair ball. It gets past the bat. Kyle diving effort. And we'll take another look at Kyle Seeger. Just out of his reach. And the head first slide, but it was going to be tricky down there. The stands will jet out a little bit, and there's a corner, and Seth wasn't sure if it was going to hit that corner or get past it all the way down on the track. And right in that area on that corner, just missed the corner. And once it went down all the way up against the outfield wall, it was an easy triple for Gentry. Third hit for the Athletics. Who's up catcher Brian Anderson? Kyle Seeger <laughs> trying to be as casual as if there wasn't going to be a throw. It's part of your playbook as a third baseman. I caught that in the minor leagues. And every now and then you'll catch a runner that'll let up just a little bit, and that can be the difference in that tag on. All two strikes. Anderson caught up in Triple A Nashville on September 20th. Outside, spent most of the season with the Reds farm system. Traded to the A's in late August. One of two left-handed hitters in the lineup for the A's today, and so far Nuno four pitches, all of them sliders off the outside corner. That basketball. So Anderson, the catcher, batting in a nine hole, has a 3 2 count. Marcus Simeon, shortstop, who led off the ball game with a solid base hit to left center field. He's on deck. Fly ball right field to Trumbo takes him back on the track. Gentry will score easily. 
The A's have a one nothing lead. Sack fly RBI for Anderson. His first RBI is an A. Here's an idea improve on your on bus percentage. Riding's easy. Just ask our rider's guide available at soundtransit.org. Top of the yarder. And Marcus Simeon. Garrett, Garrett Richards was in some trouble in the Texas game and he got a hot hitter. Shinsu Chu. Struck him out on heck of a breaking ball. 2 0 to Simeon. Foul off. 2 and 1. And it appears that Nuno aware of the fact that Simeon has done some damage to the Mariners, trying to keep everything down. Now he hits one to right field. The Trumbo will make the catch on. Two outs from Mark Canna. As you look at the American League West, Texas and Houston and, and the Angels battling out, certainly like to make that a four team party next year. Get the Mariners very much involved in that. And it's interesting talking to people in the last month or so, you know, outside of our organization. Yeah, people that. are saying, hey, I like your club and I picked you guys to win it and to get to the World Series. And I know Jerry DePoto, when he was up here the other day, he talked about it. The Mariners aren't that far off. I mean, the cores, it's a really good core that the Mariners have. Well, I think you look at it, middle of the lineup, of course, with Seeger, Cruz, and Cano. I think you have to look at that right away. Anytime you have a rotation at, at the top of it, when you have Felix Hernandez, you have to feel pretty good about that. I, I, I think that, and, and Jerry DePoto talked about it when he was with us, going after and making some adjustments to the bullpen. Look at the Delta Airlines keep climbing American League West standards. Super competitive. Mariners were into it last year at this time. They weren't eliminated till about 3 3 15 in the afternoon last year in game 162. Really like to see James Paxton have a year where he's healthy and what he can do. We haven't seen that over right. the last couple of years. Been injured. Did a wee with Kuma. I can see him get his 30 35 starts. Got to have it. Have to be excited about the progression and growth of Taiwan Walker in the rotation. The injuries to the pitching staff. Games missed this season. Paxton 96, Kuma 66, and can't forget Charlie Furbush out of the bullpen. Boy, you talk and about a vital member of that crew. Well, you're absolutely right. Charlie typically going to get the best left-handed hitters late in ball games from the opposing teams. So Charlie was pitching extremely well. It's a lot of time this year. Those are DL games missed. There's Charlie. Star bullpen better on the radio side with Rick Riz. Interviews with teammates. It's a riot. This is hit hard. Center field. Into the pen and gone. Mark Canna with his 16th homer. 70th RBI. My goodness. 2 nothing lead. Got it on a 3-2 pitch. And it looks like a change up, up out over the plate, and it is 84 miles an hour. And Nuno having to throw a lot of pitches. He's at 65 pitches working here in the third. Mm. Brett Laurie mounts into a double play. One. 
Quirk screwed himself into the ground with that swing. George Springer just doubled in now to Bay to tie that Houston game 1 1. What a catch he made in last night's ball game. Right fielder for the Astros, mm -hmm. a line drive down towards the line. Full extension dive. Save a couple of runs. It's one of the things that we talk about when we see Houston, how athletic they are. It's a heck of an outfield. They can cover some ground. They have like four really good, good pairs of legs out there. As Lauren strikes out in a 2 2 pitch. Mays get on the board. A sack fly from Anderson and a home run by Canna. 2 0 Oakland. Athletics lead 2 0. Sack fly Anderson, home run Cannon. It's time now for Geico. This date in MLB history, take you back to 1992. Mr. Martinez, Edgar, finishes the season with a 343 average, becoming the first Mariner to win an American League batting title. And he has brought his expertise here to this Mariner ball club with a difference maker, second half. Jesus Sucre leading things off. <laughs> Suki hits it hard. <laughs> Base hit left center field. How about this guy? He's been a hot hitter. Yes, sir. A really good home stand. Man, good for him. He just showed Edgar Martinez. Since he's taking over the team hitting 260, averaging four and a half runs a game. As you look at the swing by Sucre, solid base hit. Really starting to stay inside the baseball, doing a nice job. Suki now with a four game hitting streak. And on the home stand, he's six for 15. But with Edgar 260 four and a half runs before that they were hitting 233 yep. averaging just over three runs a game so he's made a big difference. The reason to be excited about Sucre we're talking about a guy who was in the 098s for a long time he's up. Entering today at 153. He's made some big strides. Good for him. He's done a great job throwing out runners this year 43 and a half percent. Seeing that batting average, that was one of two batting titles for Edgar. That one in '92 is first, but the 343. It's it's interesting at the major league level. When you go through the minor leagues, you get a lot of stock bats that you deal with. You pick a model that you like, and you work with it. When you get to the big leagues, they'll make your own model. And for Edgar, little comebacker Bassett will get Miller. Super safe to second. But that's Edgar ended up making his own model, and on there it had M for Martinez. Obviously, 343 was was his model, and that's the model that I used for the last uh, two or three years of my career. What'd you like about that bat? I, I just the, the handle was similar to the one that I'd used. I used a T141, and so the handle was similar, but the, I liked the barrel on it better, and it, it seemed to have a better balance to it, which is no surprise because Edgar put a lot of work into that bat. Yeah. He would he would weigh all of them when he would get an order in, and. Made sure they were exactly 31 ounces, 34 inches long. They were a little bit off, 
Those were batting practice bats. They wouldn't take him into the game. Heard similar stories about the late great Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn. I mean, very fastidious about that stuff. I mean, he had a scale in his the locker. Ends. I mean, down to the outs, right? Yes, 31.2 was going in the barrel. Point two. Yeah. No kidding. No, no kidding. Then he had a scale in his locker. The first time I saw it, I was wondering what that was all about. And then he had a shit in the bats going to oh, hard. Geez, line drive. And Canna retires Marte. Bidding to go two for two. You can't hit it much harder. Unfortunately, he ended up dropping it on the transfer because Sucre had a pretty good secondary lead out at second base. Might have been a double play. After a base hit, hit it on the button again for Marte. Did you ever get to that point where you had to have it down to, you know, 31.0? I mean, did you care 31.12 or 3? I, I, no, if it was close, I, I just like the feel of it. And then I'd take it in batting practice, and if it felt good, then I would, I would make it a game. Or if I didn't like it, felt some vibration or it felt soft or whatever, I, I would throw it in for did, batting practice. Did you feel the difference at 31.2 or 31.3 like he did? No. <laughs> I mean, it's only special guys like that. Yeah, I mean, that's no. incredible. Yeah. Right? It is. <laughs> I, I think more than anything too, just just like you said, he put so much into it for such a long time and that he with that work he wanted his equipment to be that way. And I think just you know psychologically, mentally, knowing that it's exactly the way it's supposed to be, he could mark that off the list and not worry about it. I'll just put a good swing on it. Hey, for most of us there are times when I just walk by the bat rack and just grab a bat out of there because things weren't working, try anything. <laughs> I don't think Edgar ever had to worry about that. <laughs> Learned a lot from him. I'm not surprised he's done so well as a hitting coach again. And we were fortunate we had Lee Ely here for a lot of years. But a lot of the guys would talk to Edgar. So he's he's been teaching this for a long time. Yeah. One oh to secret two out runner at second. Way outside. Fourth time the Mariners are seeing Bassett. So I'm here May 9th. And August 26th, July 5th, in Oakland. Gentry's got this one. And the inning is over. No runs. A hit, no errors, and a man left. It's a 2 0 Oakland lead. Season. Mariners RBIs matter both on and off the field. For every Mariners RBI during the 2015 season, PACAR made a donation to the Page Ahead Children's Literacy Program. The Mariners thank PACAR for their support in our community. Lovely day here in Seattle. The Dow Nuno trailing 2 0 gave up a sacrifice fly to catch Brian Anderson and a home run to Mark Canna. Two runs coming in the third inning. 
This will be pitch number 71. He's about to offer up to Danny Valencia. He'll be followed by Billy Butler and Josh Reddick. Middle of the order, four, five, and six. 70 pitches, 48 strikes for Nunez. So he's thrown a lot of strikes today, but the A's have fouled a lot of pitches off. That's really hurt his pitch count. Lindsay struck out in a 2 2 pitch in his first at bat. Strike one. Colors just struck out Jared Salt to Lamakia with the bases loaded, called strike three. And a heck of a breaking ball. Seeger gets a nice hop. Throws out Valencia. On Royals steaming towards a home field advantage as the Jays get blown out in the second inning. They're delayed in Minnesota. Must be some weather issues up there. The Kansas City Ball Club is really exciting. They can beat you with the power, beat you with the legs, they can catch it, they can pitch. See how the Holland losing him at the back end of the bullpen, but they have so many other arms they should be able to make up for it, right? I would think so. Frank Burley. Knocked out of the game in that Toronto contest. He was hoping to get two innings in. Uh, they get 200 innings for 15 for years. 15 years. Yeah. Didn't have it today. Billy Butler pounds this one. Cano throws him out. He of course said he's going to retire. Was, he wasn't going to be on the postseason roster, so he, yeah. didn't, he yeah. wanted to get his two innings in and then retire. But obviously, he didn't get there today. Next time we see a beautiful sight like this here at Safeco Field, it'll be home opener next April. Josh Reddick fly to center, first time. Nuno gave up back to back singles to Simeon and Cannon open up the ball game. Threw a double play ball, got a strikeout. Of Valencia. Pitch a one, two, three second. Third inning, some trouble. A triple to Gentry, sack fly Anderson. And out later, an uh, home run by Cannon. He's given up two runs on four hits. Struck out two, hasn't walked anybody. And he strikes out Josh Reddick. That's his third K. He goes one, two, three for the second time in the ball game. That's a definitive look in Seattle. Beautiful. Two nothing, Oakland.
particularly in the American League. They got a 2-1 Angel lead, top of the fourth. If the Rangers win, the Angels are eliminated. Texas clinches the West. Play a picture if the Rangers win. There you go, they play. There you go, and then with the Angels, if they win, and the Astros lose. See the Angels at Houston. For the second wild card, Texas with Quincy Air West. Angels win and Astros win. Angels eliminated. I think you'll have to keep an eye on that Angels Rangers game all the way to the end. Garrett Richards again going on three days rest, so how long will he be able to go? Mm -hmm. And if it's close late and the Rangers have a lead, what are they going to do with their bullpen? Jeff Bannister, no way he slept last night or didn't sleep well. That's a lot of scenarios, a lot of possibilities. Again, Tallis in the closer has really done a good job for him. Wasn't able to get it done yesterday. He pitched five days in a row. He's a good one too, boy. Yeah. Oh and two to Goody. Right, three called. Let's take a look at the Mariners calendar brought to you by Sleep Country USA. Postseason, it starts on Tuesday with a wild card in the American League. NL follows, and then a division series Thursday and Friday. Justin Ackley with a two out triple for the Yankees. Yankees trail at Baltimore 2 1. Top of the fourth. Come on, Robbie, out of the park. A strikeout for Bassett is first today. He's had a good fastball today. So far, he's topped out at 96 miles an hour. Seven against Bassett. First pitch, foul ball. <laughs> A Husky fan. Mascot himself. There's mascots all over the ballpark today. Here to entertain the kids. Now the kids here at the ballpark. Now the base hit for Robinson Cano. The hits just keep on coming. 16 game hitting streak for Robinson Cano. Great finish. Trying to get it back in on his hands, and it's on the inside corner, but an inside out swing. No, entered today's game hitting 331 over the last 81 games dating back to July 1. Look at the early part of the season when he was having his struggles. It was that pitch that caused a lot of problems for him. But over the last four months, he's worn it out. Really been swinging the bat well. Mike Trumbo. Hard ground out to short his first time up. It to right field and Cano ailing and all is going to get the third Trumbo with the double as Reddick's throw comes in. So Mike Trumbo sets it up nicely here in the fourth inning for Seth Smith. Double for Trumbo is 13. So he's got a fastball. It's actually in off the plate, bites it off. Probably breaks his bat, but he'll take it. And Cano being an odd hitter. And Trumbo's been no slouch either over his last 73. That's a good pace he's on. Since the 4th of July, slugging 490. 292 average against right handed pitchers and here at Safeco Field hitting 313. Seth Smith, RBI opportunity. Corners of the infield playing in. 
Simeon and Laurie playing back in the middle of the diamond. Mariners so far today, 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position. They came into the game hitting 233 overall this year. I don't know, Smitty. He's got their runs in the third. Sack fly for Anderson, home run for Cannon. Mariners trying to get to Chris Bassett, who's on a four game losing streak with a 7 1 3 ERA. Load him up, baby. Reno. I'm sure he has the green light. He wants to swing right here. Logan Morrison's on deck. Orioles get out of a first and third two out situation. Hold back the Yankees. It's two on Orioles. They go to the bottom of the fourth and bottom. 3 0 to Seth. There's a strike. What's the Cougar? Tough game yesterday, boys. Tough game. They were right there, weren't they, Mike? I know you're a Husky, but they were right there. They should were. Have, should they have were. had it. They were. It's working overtime today. Yeah, he is. Three and one here to set. Tying runs aboard. Bases are loaded for Logan Morrison. Second walk issued by Bassett. See Bob Melvin, the manager, letting the infielders know to stay back, play for two. Logan to fly out to center field his first time up. He wouldn't mind clearing the decks right now. Neither would that man. Edgar Martinez. This is Sue Sucre. Standing right next to Edgar. I'm hot. What else do I need to do? Good idea. <laughs> Another good fastball from Bassett at 96. Big spot here for the Mariners and Logan Morrison. Bassett taking a lot of time. No one. Fly to center first time is two for six career against Bassett. One of the things we've seen from Bassett this year, this is the fourth time the Mariners have faced him. Is he is a max effort guy with everything. And I think at times it costs him maybe on his command, and we're seeing that here in this inning. No place theater at 96. Four in Arizona. Astros turned away. They had a threat building. One, one there in Phoenix. Astros at the Diamondbacks. One two to Loma. There's what we're looking for. Deep drive. Right center field. It will get enough to get a run in. And move up Trumbo to third. That ball exploded off his bat and then died. I thought that thing was going to leave. We've, we've seen it on this homestand. Yeah. They have the ball out there. We saw it last night. The outfielders having to make adjustments going back and then having to run back in. I think it cost Logan a grand slam right there. Maybe got on him a little bit, but I thought it was enough to get over the fence. We'll take a look at the swing. Running fastball, 96 miles an hour. And he thought maybe he had it too, but it died right in front of the wall. Pick up a sacrifice flying an RBI. I think he thought he had a little more than that. 54th run batted in. Here's Sucre. Let's see what he learned from that last conversation. Edgar Martinez. Runners at the corners. Trumbo and Smith. Take another look at it. 
and Reddick, the right fielder, going back, and then he'll turn right back around. That's when it died. He was expecting it to be up against the fence, too. 2 1 ball game. Tying run at third base. Shukrain, one for one with a single to center. See what he's done on the homestand? He's a 400 batting average. Best run that he's had as a Mariner. Strike two. Super. Check the swing, but Mike Estabrook called strike two. Two to Sucre. We we're talking about Max Effort. He sounded like he was trying to bench press 375. <laughs> I could hear it on the replay to Logan when he hit right? the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get everything out of that fastball he can. Yeah. All two strikes. First baseman, McKenna is right there. Mariners do get a run on two hits. No errors, leave two. 2 1 ball game. Oakland on top. Lead in the fifth inning. Take a look at scenarios for the Astros. Vince McCullers on the mound right now. The Astros win and the Rangers win. Houston's going to clinch that wild card. Texas clinches the West and LA's eliminated. The Astros win and Rangers lose. Houston's at Texas with the division title tomorrow. And if they lose, here's the scenarios. It's a lot of things going on here in this final day. There's no look at the losing scenario. Astros lose, Angels lose, Houston puts us the second wild card. If the Astros lose, and Angels win. So that's going to be fun. I think all those games, it's going to come right down to the eighth and ninth innings today. The only thing that's really been subtle is Toronto getting beat up. It looks like Kansas City will have home field advantage throughout. Base hit up the middle. Jake Smolinski. Hey everybody, you're invited to join the club as a 2016 Mariners season ticket holder. You'll enjoy exclusive benefits and opportunities. Now, if you'd like to test drive a safe gold field seat to find a location that's right for you, all you have to do is call an account executive at 206 346 
four zero zero one of Marylist.com slash sixteen. Cano is going to take care of this pop up. Off the bat of Craig Gentry went away. Ryan Anderson, the catcher. Picked up an RBI his first time up, sacrificed fly <laughs> to right. <laughs> they said mascots are in the house. <laughs> That's for my verse. <laughs> Pretty good fastball right at the bottom of the strike zone didn't get the call. One oh pitch here from Nuno. Mentioned it in his last outing, he threw 83 pitches. He's now at 86. This will probably be his last inning. Guys in the bullpen starting to stretch and move around a little bit. Two and one. Somebody two and two. Oh boy, his own cheering section. <laughs> Get a glove on that lady there to the left. Is that the biggest glove you've ever seen? <laughs> right? <laughs> that thing's huge. Strike <laughs> right, three called Anderson. He's gone. Fourth strikeout for Nuno. First one looking. Just two away. Tune in to Root Sports next Saturday. We're going to bring you another Big Sky Conference matchup presented by your local Ford store. Watch the Sacramento State Hornets take on the Montana State Bobcats. Action continues next Saturday, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here in Root Sports, the home of Big Sky Football. Marcus Simeon. One for two, single to center to lead off the ball game. His last time up, Nuno stayed away from a miss with that changeup right there. He wants him to hit the ball the other way. His power is to left field. Set up away again. Jake Lamb with an RBI single for Arizona puts the Diamondbacks back in front. That's in the bottom of the fourth. Local kid. From Bishop Blanchett High School. Nice. <laughs> Two balls, one strike to Simi. One from Nuno. High fly ball. Going back, Marte coming in. Seth Smith. Smith is there. And that'll do it. No runs, one hit, no errors, and a man left. <laughs> Mr. Yuck. <laughs> Looking to make some friends and swinging and missing.
mascot day. SPU's Falcon. You get Thunderbirds mascot, Seattle Pacific. Still trying to figure out who the Ram belongs to. But providing a lot of entertainment here at Kids Appreciation Day. That's it. So Kwame Summit Ski Area. There we go. Everybody's got a mascot. Brad Miller looks at strike one. Brad to tell Marte Kyle Seeger here in home fifth. Brad come back. Bassett was first at bat. Bears got the run on the sacrifice fly. Logan Morrison in the fourth. Thought maybe he was going to have a grand slam oh, on that sacrifice fly, hit it out to the right center field fence. But you're right about that wind pattern. It's been like that for a while. Nice fastball up out over the plate, and you can see Brett on that swing going the other way again. He's picked up a number of hits on this home stand, hitting the ball the other way. Second. Orioles have just scored three to one over the Yankees. JJ Hardy with a base hit. Up the middle scored Matt Weeders. Yankees have not had a lot of fun in this series against the Orioles. Their last week, even having clinched the playoff spot, their offense has been on a tremendous decline. And Simeon handles and throws out Miller. Adrian Belcher has just did a two run homer for the Texas Rangers. This off of Garrett Richards. 3 2 Rangers. They got a breaking ball and drilled it deep into the stands in right field. They're going nuts in Arlington, as you would expect. Here's Cattell Marte. A hot shot to the first baseman, Mark Cannon, last time up. A couple of good at bats, picked up a base hit, first time up. Lined out to Canna. Seems that he's made a habit of getting on base a couple times a day. He's on base a lot in last night's game. Oh, look at that. First Sorry. time we've seen it. He's been encouraged to, at minimum, try to bump once a week, at minimum. We'll take a look at it. he's going to walk up on the third baseman Valencia playing in on the grass and started to move in towards home and he looked like he was going to try to slap it by him. He was on base four times in last night's ball game. I want to say Ibar was the last guy we saw do that run up and it started with the slash attempt. He definitely is one of the ones that would do it. I'm trying to think if there's been anybody else that I can remember. Uh, that's a short list. Need to bring that part of the game back. 3-0. There you go. For the second time. Third walk issued by Bassett. Seager gets something down here. Ask you this as a former player, and we've been talking about this the last few days. World Series of Maxes. It's a seven games, November 4 is hmm. the latest they can go. I mean, that's a huge if you're playing in a northern city, that's gonna be murder. It can't be. Runner goes, got that back stolen. Not even bothering to throw. Now he stole that off of Bassett. Easy still for Marte. 
in standing with his eighth stolen base. That's not a situation that's going to be ideal for the players. I can tell you that. We'll take a look at the jump by Marte. Big leg kick from Bassett. We talked about him being a max pitcher earlier in the ball game. That's easy for Marte. Chance to tie it up. But you play, you know, you're going to play in some cold weather in April and sometimes May. Then you get a not nice and hot in the summer and even the fall it's still nice but now you, you could be talking 35 to 45 degrees easily with wind. The thing that you're really worried about is there are delays or you have to sit around for a couple of days there you seen because of weather sure. As a kid, I remember the 62 World Series. I think that was, they had a stretch there where it rained in San Francisco. They lost about three days. I can remember a team that playing in Cleveland in 95. Right. But the first day it was about 75 degrees. The next day it was, what you're talking about, about 35, 40, somewhere in there. <laughs> this sport's not made Overnight. for Overnight. Yeah. This sport's <laughs> not made for that. Two and two. So as a player, you had to go through some mind exercises to get yourself straight before you go out there. Just go out there and no, just deal with it. No, you just go. Once, once the, uh, once I say play ball, you're good to go. Yeah, especially if you're at that point, you're talking about the World Series. Uh, yeah, weather is going to be the last thing on your mind. Full count to Kyle with Franklin Gutierrez on deck. But to your point, it's not ideal. Yeah. One out. Marte with great speed. He's at second. 3 2 pitch coming here to Seeger, and he gets time. Mariners run coming on a sack fly from Logan Morrison in the fourth. Oakland open to scoring in the third. Sack fly Anderson home on Cannon. 3 2 pitch here to Seeger. Goes the other way. And it's a foul ball. Have the bases loaded against the Yankees. Two outs, bottom of the four, three, one, Baltimore. Logan Verrett pitching a no no for the Mets right now against Washington. Max Scherzer threw his second no hitter of the season against the game against the Mets yesterday. First since Nolan Ryan to throw two no hitters in the regular season. See, this is one of the things you and I have talked about. The catcher just went out to the mound, mm -hmm. had a conversation with him, and now they can't get on the same page. You would think they would talk about what pitch right. they're, they want to throw next. Hey, Maybe the next throw. two or three. Sure. And now he's going to make another trip out. That's ridiculous. Houston has runners at the corners. Two outs in the fifth. Arizona leads 2-1. The Orioles have loaded them up. 3 1 0 is looking for more. Here's a 3 2 pitch to Seeger. Not close. What a discussion for that. Back to back walks. Now the Mariners got to catch in. Hey, for every strikeout recorded by a Mariners pitcher at Safe Go Field this season, Holland America Line made a donation to the Seattle Children's Hospital Uncompensated Care Fund. With a commitment of $25,000. Mariners thank Holland America Line for their outstanding support. Well, Goody is going to step in with runners at first and second, one out. Walked in the first inning, called out on strikes in the fourth. 
slicing drive, center field, run down by Gentry, tagging his Marte, and he'll get there safely with a head first dive. And the speed of Gentry, we talked about it earlier in the game, takes a hit away from Franklin Gutierrez. Covered a lot of ground to get to that line drive out towards right center field. You ever use the easy bake oven mitt there? No. They're, they're fairly new. I didn't see those things around. You know, there's every team has a couple of guys that'll wear it, protect their fingers. Yep. And one for two, and I hit into a double play, picked up the base hit, and scored a run. Extended his hitting streak to 16 games. Paul oh, Hamill, 69 pitches in the sixth inning. Ground ball, Laurie. Time throws out Cano. Mariners, they're not going to do it. Nobody answers. And Vidal Nuno, hey, it's the last game of the season. I'm going to give you everything I have. It's 2 1 Athletics. But Dal Nuno has acquitted himself quite nicely through five innings with four strikeouts, no walks, giving up two runs. Really, it's just the one home run. The solo home run yeah. was a mistake. But outside of that, it really has pitched well. And the A's are putting up a pretty good fight. They've had a number of at-bats where they foul pitches off, but he's hanging in there, being able to get through five and back out there to pitch here in the sixth inning. 93 pitches overall for him. A lot of strikes, 64 strikes. Got two, three, and four in the order. Mark Canna, Brett Laurie, and Danny Valencia. Three, two, Texas. As Michael Guaype heating up. Guaype pitched an inning last night. Walk two. Mark Canna, two for two, single and a home run. Safe Cofield. Astros have the bases loaded, top five. And here's a ball hit down to Seeger. One away. That will help. A couple of pitches to record that out. Yeah, no more bats like Smolinski had in the second. Was it 14 pitches? 
And again, Simeon started the game with nine, fouled yeah. off a bunch of pitches before he picked up a base hit, but just two pitches to get that out. Now at 95. Houston just tied it up 2 2. Check one to Brett Laurie. It's a fair ball backhanded by Seeger. Two away. Boy, a low pitch uh, inning here. Do well for Nuno. Have him continue to hit it towards Kyle, and that'll work. So Gerardo Parra, two run single, Baltimore stretching it out 5 1 over the Yankees. Yankees lose and tie Astros or Rangers. New York would clinch the second wild card. New York would be at Houston or Texas. Brad's not going to be able to get this one. Base hit off the bat of Danny Valencia. He's one for three. Next up, Billy Butler, two grand outs over two. Runner at first, two outs. Two runs, six hits in an error. For the Athletics, a run on four hits, no errors for the Mariners. Mariners have stranded six. A's have stranded two. He's pitch number 100. And he's missed with a couple of change-ups to start this at bat. No lead at all for Valencia at first base. Two will pitch. Way out front. Another good change. Hasn't thrown him a fastball yet. Billy can hit a fastball. We knew that. Two outs, one on here in the sixth. Time called. Count one's full. By Nuno. We have Reddick, the left handed hitter. Nuno now 104 pitches, probably his last hitter. The A's today have really haven't had many opportunities. They're over two with runners in scoring position. And the solo home run and then the sacrifice fly after the triple. Carter just struck out in Houston, but they did get a, uh, a tying run. One out, uh, nobody out. Bases loaded. Gaddis hit into a double play, and that's played at that run. A steady diet of breaking balls to Reddick this afternoon. 105 pitches for Nuno. One off his season most if you're 106 against Texas September 9. One 
the two trying to put Reddick away with two on two out. Keep it a one run game. Broken bat slow grounder to Cano. Nice job by the Dow Nuno. Strands two runners in the sixth. Mariners have Trumbo Smith and Morrison coming up. Ford Sports Desk. It's the final game of the year for the Mariners. We're wondering where you're taking it in. Remember to use the hashtag where I root like Emily here. Final day at the ballpark 2015. Joy Clark, one of my favorites, also here at the ballpark. She came by to say hi. We get a steady stream over here at the Ford Sports Desk. And Jody Lynn also celebrating a beautiful day here in the 2015 season. Guys, back upstairs to you. Thank you, Angie. Great job this year. Great working with you as always. Two to one score here. Athletics with Mark Trumbo leading off. He doubled to right last time up. That's a good <laughs> swing. Bad intentions, boy. And a good pitch hit. Breaking ball 85 up. Elevated for you already in the middle of the plate. Yeah, he tried to do some damage, tie this ball game up. You see the shadows starting a little bit further out. Not terrible yet, but a couple of innings, inning or two, it's going to get tough for the guys. Strike two. Trumbo to be followed by Seth Smith and Logan Morris. Mariners got their run from Lomo. Base is loaded. One out in the fourth. The sacrifice fly to deep right center field. You see the shadows when they get about halfway out to the mound is when it's going to be really difficult. Folded tag applied by Anderson. And that's Probably strikeout that. number two for Chris Bassett. Going on right now, the Mariners team store is offering a cool gift with purchase. You get a free Mariners cooler bag perfect for tailgating and picnics with your $75 novelty purchase. This free gift is available while supplies last, so head to a Mariners team store today. All one Seth Smith. Smitty with a fly to center and a walk. Two thousand four oh two on hand here today, Kids Appreciation Day. Wrapping up two thousand fifteen season. Two 
about four tremendous summers. And a roll here for Seattle. Inside. Michael Guaype getting loose in the pen again. So it looks like Nuno's afternoon is done. It's from a season high 108 pitches. That'll probably be it. Nuno. Smitty's aboard. Fifth walk. Maybe Lomo can get all the one this time. Ball exploded off his bat with the bases loaded in the fourth inning. Couldn't quite ride it out. He did pick up the RBI to Mariners on the board. And then his first at bat fly to center. Canna can't come up with that one. Smith will get the third. Mariners tying run at third to go ahead run at first. They sit for Lomo. It's a slow curveball, 71 miles an hour, able to keep his hands back just long enough to put the barrel on it and hit it past Canada, the first baseman who was holding Smith. Smith able to move around the third, so a great situation for the Mariners. Bring up the hot hitting Jesus Sucre. Nice ring to it. Fernando Rodriguez getting loose in the pen. We saw him last night. Suki today has base hit the center and a pop to the first baseman. Having a heck of a run down in Texas. 85 pitches, seven innings, and allowed one hit. Stopped by Anderson. See if Sucre can get a pitch elevated, something he can hit in the air out to the outfield. Try to hit that fastball to the right side of the infield. Did goes as Mike Castro up one on one. Texas with a 3 2 lead. Cole Hamels on the mound. Sucre. Good road right now. Four game hitting streak. Six hits on the homestand. Runner goes and back goes. Loma. Good great try to tie it up here. To the count. Nasa was able to get a, the first strike on a fastball running in on his hands and he was out in front of that slider, slider on the outside corner. Passage ready with the 2 2 to suit. Great one out. Runners at the corners. Little number. Bassett covers, runs, scores. Got a 2-2 ball game. It works. 
happy Sue Sucre. His seventh run batted in ties his score at two. And Morrison able to move up and get himself into scoring position. It's another fastball. It's going to be in on his hands, inside out swing. Fortunately, it was able to get past Canna, so they weren't able to get the double play. And although Laurie is able to handle the ground ball and get Sucre at first, he will pick up the RBI. And it'll also give Brad Miller a chance to drive in a run. The Mariners so far 0 for 7 runners in scoring position today, so for somebody to come up with a big base hit. RBI's out of the seven and eight holes in the batting order. Brad hits one foul. Two outs with Morrison at second base and no one pitch here to Brad Miller. Jared Saltelamakia just got a ground rule of the devil. And Arizona scoring Goldschmidt. A 3-2 Arizona lead. Two strike RBI here. Line two. Four Bassett and his pitch count as high as 112. He's at 93 right now. Two runs, six hits, and an error for the A's. Two runs, five hits, no errors for the Mariners. Mariners have stranded six, four left on base by Oakland. Rodriguez ready to go. He's been throwing for a while out in the pen. Michael Dwight Bay ready in the Mariners pen. One two pitch to Brad. Take him high. Two two pitch. Brad goes down swinging. When we come back, the Mets try to make some history against the Nationals. Angie Bentink will have that story when we come back.
Yes, big news yesterday in baseball. The Nationals' Max Scherzer throws a no-hitter. Not a perfect game, but a no-hitter. Well, how about this? Today, the Mets were trying to return the favor, not with one pitcher, but several. That game, however, has been broken up. The no-hitter has been broken up in the seventh inning. Uh, actually, it was uh, Jonathan Neath. Nice allowing the hit. Clint Robinson got the hit. Okay, two occasions there have been back-to-back -back no hitters thrown by each team in a series in 1968, and then it was done again in 1969. So this is no hitters thrown in consecutive games in the same series. It's happened twice. It was on pace to happen again today, but uh, that game, that no hitter, has been broken up. Guys, back upstairs to you. All right, Angie. Thank you very much. It's happening in a pen as always. Last time to have some fun out there till we get back here in April. Michael Guaype, new pitcher for the Mariners. 20 appearances, ERA north of five. Here's Jake Smolinski. One for two. Got a base hit the center back in the fifth inning. Ball for strike. Well, Guaype, his fastball will be anywhere from 92 to 95 miles an hour. Just saw the slider from him. Update from Baltimore. Chris Davis with a home run. It's 7 1 Oreos, Han. 7 1. The Yankees lose inside the Astros and Rangers. And it puts that number two wild card. Be at either Houston or Texas. Sam Fold is going to come out pinch hit. Craig Gentry, and he'll stay on the infield and the outfield. Thank you, Frank. All kinds of exciting things happening in baseball today. Right now, Arizona 3 2 in the sixth over Houston. Seven hitter. Two homers, 22 runs batted in. Two and oh from Bright Bay. Center field, long run for Smith. He's there. On the way with the man at first, Brian Anderson, the catcher. Two ball game. Anderson with a sack fly in the third inning. Scored. They brought home the first run of the ball game after Gentry led off the inning with a triple. David Rollins getting loose in the pen for the Mariners. I've seen David in a few days. Get him an inning today. Mariners trying to finish on an uptick. They've lost nine of their last ten ball games. David. Two and oh. Slot. I think he's buying some time for David to get loose in the pen too. Logan Kensing now starting to throw. 
Rangers still lead 3 2 bottom seven in Arlington. Rangers have base loaded nobody out. Anderson, the catcher, sack fly to strike out looking. He's way ahead in the count here, 3 0. Not close. First and second, one out. Top of the order, good hitter in Simeon. Talked about it a lot this month. A lot of young relievers out in the pen, and start to look at lineups and think about different things. And instead of going right at Anderson, again, just I think he had four at bats coming into the game today. Yeah, it's two so for that, four. Yeah. You have to be aggressive and go at him. Ends up walking him on four pitches, and again we find himself in trouble, hitting a batter, number seven hitter. He pitched to Anderson like it was Yogi Berra in his prime. McClendon. Oh, I'd seen enough. Yeah, yep. Not a good outing for White. Hit batter. Fly out. A four pitch walk. No, well, 10 pitches, just two strikes. That's not going to get it done. Not even close. Logan Kenzie will take over. We'll step aside. 2 2 ball game here in Seattle. Make a donation to Mariners Care for every Mariners win. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Jack in the Box. If the Mariners win, mention Mariners for a free Jumbo Jack with purchase tomorrow at Jack in the Box. Could not ask for a better October 4th here in Seattle. Yes, fabulous. New pitcher for the Mariners would be Logan Kensing. He comes into a two on one out jam in the seventh in a 2 2 ball game. 22,402 on hand here at the last taste of baseball in Seattle till next April 8th. Logan Kensing, 18 appearances on the year. 6.59 ERA, 12 strikeouts, 7 walks, and 13 and two thirds. Opponent hitting 231 has given up a couple of home runs. Sinking fastball about 91 92 miles an hour. Mix in a slider with that. A lot of guys making their debut this season Kensing Ramirez, Rasmussen, Guaype, Tony Zick, and David Rollins out in that bullpen. 
turnaround from last year. Turnover from last year. Ball one. Off to a bad start at 2 0. A couple of sliders missing off the plate away. So again, one for three. Got off the game with a base hit in the center. There's a strike. Two and one. Is at second. They got Anderson at first. Down the third, Seager. Kino. Paloma. 5 4 3 double play. Just what the doctor ordered. We will keep it right here for God Bless America. Final time here in the 2015 season at Safeco Field. Join us in honoring our great country with the singing of God Bless America. Please welcome back Dier Lopez. as you consider how a Washington's lottery win would change your bucket list. Play today so you get a good look the Hood Canal on the peninsula. Just a gorgeous day today. Isn't it? People really enjoying out in the pen and as we are, we are right here it. above the A in Safeco Field. Man, can you believe this nine years in the books? 
No. <laughs> no, I'm with you. <laughs> Done quickly. <laughs> there we go. But that being said, enjoyed it again. Absolutely, my man. Good you. stuff, yeah, man. Enjoyed really it. enjoyed it. Absolutely. Texas traced its lead four to two. A nine pitch walk. Wow. The fielder. Bases are still loaded. Beltre's batting right now. Here at Safe Go Field. New pitcher, Endo Rodriguez. 55 appearances this year, 3.90 ERA, 65 strikeouts at 57 and two thirds. Good num number for him there. Opponent's hitting just 203. Fastball slider, mixing a changeup. Marte. Slash one past the third baseman Valencia. Second time we've seen him try that. Tough time for the hitters right now with the shadows. About halfway out to the mound, so it makes it difficult. You can see Marte. Tough, tough time. It's up to pick up the spin, right? Exactly. It just looks gray. You can't see the seams. It's difficult. Trying to guess what he's going to throw. Not going to get it past him. Underhand scoop. One way here in the seventh. We'll bring up Kyle Seeker. He's over two with a walk. Field single David Freeze try to make a tough play run scores Texas lead to five to two but as we saw yesterday don't count those angels out they come back with a big but four spot in the ninth in yesterday's ball game and we talked about it the setup man and the closer for the Rangers there those guys have pitched five days in a row so they're probably not available today. One of the stories we have from the National League. A pitcher down in Florida, Angie Mentick, will have that story. A little bit later. Two and one to Kyle Seeger. Three and one with Franklin Gutierrez on deck. Two. Pretty good fastball at 95 on the inside corner. There's Franklin. Payoff here to Kyle. Popped it up. Calling for the Sam Fuller. Two away here in the seventh inning of the 2 2 ball game. Mitch Moreland just hit a sacrifice fly down the right field line. Shinsu Chu scores for Texas. That lead at 6 to 2. The only thing in doubt is where the Houston New York game will be played. Looking more and more like it's going to be in Houston. Yeah. Which is tough for the Yankees because we all know how well Houston plays at home. The Yankees right now trailing 7 2 top six. That's in Baltimore. And there 
Arizona 3 2 over Houston. It's Goody bounces one down to Valencia. And Rodriguez has a 1 2 3 7th. 2 2 game. Post postgame presented by Delta Airlines. We'll hear from the skipper Lloyd McClendon after this one. Get his thoughts on the 2015 season after game number 162. Uh, we will also have a, a steady stream of live interviews from inside the clubhouse as the players clean out their lockers. And of course, we will give you the most up to the minute playoff pitcher. It's all coming up on Mariners post game presented by Delta Airlines. Guys. Angie, thank you very much. Texas Rangers with a lead now seven to two against the Angels. We get a two two ball game here. Mark Canna will lead off against Logan Kensing. Mariner runs coming on a fourth inning sack fly by Logan Morrison and an RBI ground out by Jesus Sucre in the sixth. Athletics got their runs in the third, a sack fly from Anderson and a home run from this man, Mark Canna. Elvis wow. Andrews just doubled in two more, nine to two Rangers. That should help the bullpen situation <laughs> for the Rangers and Jeff Bannister in his first year as the manager. Breathing a lot easier. Yeah. Now Nunez started for the Mariners did a nice job six innings six hits two runs both earned a walk four K's 108 pitches a season most for him finishes with a 374 ERA really did a nice job David Rollins getting loose in the Mariners pen Ryan Dull getting loose in the A's bullpen Anna, Laurie, and Valencia, 2 3 4 in the order for the Athletics. Second time David's been up. Arizona continues to lead Houston. That's 3 2 in the seventh. Top of the seventh. Two. 
Strike three called. Cannon didn't like that one. I guess to put the whole plate on fire. Like the way Sucre helped him out. <laughs> Bounced out from behind the plate, <laughs> throw it around the horn. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> right there. You may have noticed it's <laughs> October 4th. <laughs> well, a situation like this. I was thinking back to that story. Here's the line drive center field. <laughs> you know, he's still that turn with Merrill. We got a couple of Hall of Fame pitchers, boys. Swing the bats. Here we go today. <laughs> And I'm telling you, if it was in the area, it was a strike. <laughs> Wish I could remember what the time of that game was. It was quick, though. <laughs> like they needed the help. <laughs> yeah, right? Max Muncy's going to pinch hit for Danny Valencia. Boys, if he can roll it to the plate, I'm calling it. Swing it. <laughs> He didn't cheat himself on that first swing. 208 batting average, three homers, nine runs batted in. His 45th game. Backing up Brad Miller. Got sunglasses on. Step shy of the track. Makes the catch. Busy day for Brad. He's putting himself quite nicely out there. One, two, three in the eighth. Mariners looking for a run here. Cano, Trumbo, and Smith coming up. Day. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you are. 2 2 ball game. Arizona leads Houston. Top of the seventh. There's your scenarios for Houston. If they lose, they clinch the number two wild card, will play at New York. Astros win and New York loses. They'll host the Yankees. Meanwhile, the Yankees get drilled in Baltimore 7 2. Chris Davis hit a home run in that game. It's 46. Traveling secretary making hotel reservations as we speak. He's feeling better. Ryan Doe, the new pitcher. Just 12 appearances for him, a 394 ERA. 16 innings. He has 15 strikeouts, six walks, bonus hitting just 200. He has given up three home runs. Look at the middle of the lineup. Cano, Trumbo, and Smith do up. For three runs scored today. Hit one out, end on a good note. Why not? 
already extended his hitting streak. Max Muncy at third. Took over for Valencia. Bobby hit his 21st home run of the year in last night's ball game. And a pretty good count for him right now. Bill trying to pitch him inside. Miss badly. A good fastball that he can handle. Tom Wilhelmson getting loose in the Mariners' pen. Two and one. If the scores hold, here are your division series matchups. Kansas City will host the Yankee Houston winner. Toronto will host Texas. It's going to be a lot of fun watching those games. That's what it looks like in the National League. St. Louis hosts the Pittsburgh Cubs winner, and the Dodgers host the Mets. Pirates could be super dangerous if they can get by the Cubs. A good ball, both of them are good ball clubs. I like Pittsburgh. If they can get past the Cubs, Ariad is going to pitch that game, yep. so that'll be a good one. Garrett Cole going Ray. for Pittsburgh. I think it might come down to the bullpens and Pittsburgh would have the edge there. Right. There's Trumbo. The other scenario, and with all due respect to the people in Pittsburgh, if the Cubs were able to get to the World Series, <laughs> you may want to just go to Chicago and watch that party. Sure, most Cup fans would be aware the opponents hit a pop flop, pop foul. Get out of the way, let your guy catch it. <laughs> Toronto won the series, season series against Texas, four to two. Let's see if Seth Smith can hit a home run. With the Mariners to lead, Tom Wilhelmson getting loose in the pen. Seth with 11 home runs on the year. Timing's everything. Last homer was the 14th of September against the Angels. Inside. Smitty hit a two run homer. Second inning. That was Monday, September 14th. Mariners won here against the Angels 10 to 1. Kansas City went two and four against Houston and the Yankees. One one to Seth. Two balls, one strike. Seth has a good count. Three and one. Ryan Dahl, he likes to throw a lot of fastballs. This fastball in the low 90s. Three and one to Seth. Bounce foul. Handled by Chris Woodward. Still pitching. Nine two. Rangers lead. Smitty. Center field deep. Full going back. Get up. God. Home run. Seth Smith. It's 
Smitty with a two out knock and a big one in the Mariners lead at three to two. And I can tell you there is nothing cheap about that one. We saw a number of fly balls in this game that have been knocked down by the wind. Seth in a 3-2 count gets a fastball 92 running away from him and goes dead center field. Out of the reach by Sam Paul, the center fielder. His 12th home run of the year, more importantly, gives the Mariners the lead. Smitty with his first home run since September 14th. There's two outs in the eighth. 3 2 lead for the Mariners. And thankfully for Seth, Mike Trout's in Arlington. <laughs> Good point. Four hundred eight feet on that home run. Sixth hit for the Mariners. George Springer scores on a wild pitch. Tied ball game at three three. Sack fly, fourth inning for the Mariners' first run. Got a base hit to right in the sixth. One for two. And Tom ready to go. Strikes out the highlight of the inning with Seth Smith Homer straight away center. Mariners lead it three to two as we go to the top of the ninth. Closing time in the bartender. Now you know that Ichiro Suzuki, when he played right field here for the Mariners, that he had a fantastic arm, great speed. Did you know that he had a secret wish and desire to pitch? Well, that was fulfilled today. The Phillies and the Marlins playing a game, nothing on the line. So in the ninth inning, look at this. Ichiro comes in to pitch. Look at the breaking ball. How about that? <laughs> he goes, I didn't know he had that. I thought he was just going to throw me fastballs. Nope. By the way, the fastball did hit 87 miles per hour. Here is a fly ball to end the inning. Uh, the score ends up being 7-2, but his line looks like this. One inning pitch, guys. Two hits, one earned run, uh, zero strikeouts, but he had his control, zero walks as well. But uh, that one earned run, that would give him an ERA of nine. 
He always said he wanted <laughs> to pitch and pitch till he's 50. So. Actually, <laughs> we talk about that as Tom Wilhelmson will take over 52 appearances, 12 saves, and 14 opportunities, a 3.25 ERA. Itchmeister with it. A stint on the mound. When I was um, in Japan, right, playing over there, one of the big stories they talked about was Ichiro, who was perennial All Star, sure. but he pitched in one of the All Star games. I'm mm -hmm. told. So it's not the first time he's been on the mound. So James Jones out in right field. No, he he had to have been really jacked for this, you know, get oh, a chance course. to show it off. Of course. <laughs> Oh, and two to Butler. Only thousand off. Only over two of the walk today. The Astros and the Diamondbacks tied at three. Bottom of the seventh in Phoenix. Butler's gone. Come on from some well located fastballs. Pretty good breaking ball. 78 miles an hour on the outside corner. Josh Reddick. Over for three day. Josh. Two and up. One to Reddick. It's Malinsky on deck. Throw him a 2 0 change up, and it was perfect right on the outside corner at the knees. Not much he could do with it. <laughs> 2 2. Back it up with 95. Coco Crisp now on deck. 2 2 pitch. Run full. Three, two. Struck him out. Two down here in the ninth. And Coco Crisp, he's going to pinch hit. Hit for Smolinski, who started the game. The fans on their feet. 22,402 here on this final day of the 15 season. Big time trying to put a capper on this one. Chris three for seven against Tom. Three runs, six hits, no errors for Seattle. Two six and one for Oakland. Oh one pitch outside for ball one. Coco. Strike 
two. Tom going right after him. Good fastball, 96 miles an hour. Had an excellent changeup today, too. We've seen one curveball from him. That was to get a strike out of Butler. Paul Goldschmidt just hit a two run homer. Zona leads 5 3 over Houston. Bottom seven. Tom trying to put a wrap on it. The one two to Coco Chris. Strike three call. Game over. Tom will helps it. Strikes out the side to end the Mariners season with a victory three to two. The Mariners get the second win over the last 11 ball games as we get our final taste of baseball here in Seattle in 2015. For Tom, his 13th save on the year. Robinson Cano finishes the season with a 16 game hitting streak. So good news there. And Vidal Nuno, a little bit of everything for the Mariners this year, including the start of this one today where he pitched extremely well. Seth Smith with a game winning home run. What a beauty that was. Two outs in the eighth. The Mariners win this ball game by the final uh, three to two. Mariners post game presented by Delta Airlines out in center field starts right now with Brad and Bill. All right, gentlemen, thank you. We will be joined by Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, also Dave Valley, Jason Bay, the whole cast.